Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, the costs of professional RF power meters that can cover up to at least 2.4 gigahertz are not cheap and can range from a thousand to many thousands of dollars. Now, while I save my pennies for a professional piece of gear, I researched many solutions that would be low cost and fairly accurate. I then stumbled across this low cost, high performance RF power sensor designed by DL5NEG, who has kindly shared this knowledge on their website. Technically, how this works is that you input an RF signal via the SMA connector and out the other end will be a DC voltage. But how do we know what level of voltage equals what level of RF power? DL5 NEG has stated that they have made this RF power sensor many times using the components listed on their website, with each build having an almost exact same performance. So in theory, if I build this, I should be able to replicate what DL5 NEG has achieved. They have provided a nice spreadsheet which covers the output DC voltage to DBM conversion in 200 MHz increments all the way from 200 megahertz up to six gigahertz. Now, personally, I'm only interested in the 2.4 gigahertz reading, and these are the figures we'll use later in the video. Now, these values are in volts, so we can see from the spreadsheet that most of the values are in microvolts until we get up to at least 15 dBm. I would also recommend using an attenuator, especially if you want to measure high power. Now the board layout has been published so it's easy to replicate. Each square on this diagram represents one millimeter and each component required has been labeled. Now obviously these are SMD components and the board size is just 25 millimeters by 15 millimeters. So it's extremely small. So I ordered all the components from Farnell, making sure to order at least 10 of each of these components. If you drop one of these on the floor, then you can kiss its ass goodbye, unless of course you have very good eyesight and lots of patience to find it. Now my first attempt at making this board turned out pretty well, and it worked. The vias placement on this board are quite important. Now these link the background plate to the front and it's essential part of the circuit. Now after proof of concept was achieved, I turned my focus to KiCad, wondering if I could design this board to be manufactured by PCBWay. Now, thanks to Mike G0MJW for his guidance on KiCad, I was able to come up with this design. As mentioned before, the original design for this sensor states that the vias shown in the original diagram are important, but you can add more if you want to. So after designing the board in KiCad and viewing the lovely 3D model and feeling a sense of achievement, it was time to send these designs off to a PCB manufacturer. Now I've used PCB Way before, but of course you can choose whoever you want. I think it cost me around $5 for five boards, plus the postage. Now once they arrived, I gave them an inspection just to make sure they were built as designed. As mentioned a couple of times, the vias are important along with the 50 ohm strip in the middle, which the components solder to. Using my Andon Star digital microscope, which has a nice 10 inch 1080p screen, I proceeded to add the components. Now for this, I used solder paste and a hot air reflow tool. Now it doesn't look particularly neat and clean under the microscope, but the components are just so small and I don't really do this all the time. What's nice to watch is that when the solder paste starts to melt, the components just seem to pull themselves into place. Pretty cool to watch in my opinion. I do think I will be invested in some better tweezers with a finer tip as the ones I was using were kind of large. I also need to purchase something to hold the board in position while soldering, especially when using the hot air solder station as it tends to move the board with the air. Now, after I finished installing the components and testing for shorts with a multimeter, it was time to install the board in some kind of housing. Now, this housing I found on eBay. The seller also included a male N-type connector along with a grommet for the cable coming out the back. Now, this was a perfect solution for using this like a real professional RF sensor head. I also attached a couple of extra tie wraps on the inside of the casing just to add extra strain relief on that cable as I really don't want any damage to the board if that cable gets pulled. 
With all the case assembled, it's now time to test. For this test, I'll use my Ant SDR E200, which I know emits around 10 dBm at 2.4 GHz. So it's going to be interesting to see the results. The other end of the cable, which comes from the sensor, was then attached to a multimeter. Now this isn't the most expensive multimeter in the world, but it's fairly accurate and can measure down to millivolts as needed. Using SDR console to control the E200, I transmitted a narrow FM carrier at full power. The resulting voltage, as shown on the meter, was 522 millivolts. Now looking this up on the chart provided by DL5NEG, this comes directly between 9 and 10 dBm. So I'm very happy with this result. Now this particular sensor will be used in my Q0100 setup and be attached to a minus 40 dB coupler. The sensor output will be connected directly to an ADS1115 ADC, which is then connected to a Raspberry Pi. Using Node Red, I can then read this voltage and using some JavaScript, convert this to a dBm value. I can then go on further to convert this dBm value to watts and show it on a nice gauge, which will provide live data. So there we go guys, how to create a RF sensor using a scotchy diode and a nice little bit of PCB design. If you've made something similar to this, then let me know down in the comments below. If anyone's got a professional power meter they'd like to donate to the channel, then please contact me. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, see you guys in the next one. Thank you.